hello everyone welcome to vlsi career craft and today let's see one more example on static timing analysis on the concept of clock jitter and its effect on setup timing check so let's get started so it's given that the billet circuit has flip-flops there are three flip-flops and the setup hold and clock to queue delays of these flip-flops are already given and we have combinational logic in between whose maximum and minimum delays are given and then uh, we have inverters in the clock path and it's given that each inverter has a delay of 5 picosecond and the inverted delay randomly varies by plus or minus 10 percent what is this plus or minus random variation is is nothing but clock jitter so let's understand more on this. Uh, let's consider a simple flip, uh, circuit, flip-flop 1, flip-flop 2, which is launch and this is capture. And we have a combination logic in between and there is delay between launch path and capture path, which is nothing but t skew. So we also have a clock jitter of 10 plus or minus 10 percent let's say so this clock jitter is nothing but random deviation of each clock edge of the flip-flop so if i have a clock edge launch clock edge and capture clock edge if this clock edge is varying randomly by plus or minus 10 percent this is nothing but clock jitter so how does this uh, affect added to this setup timing check equation let's see so we have two cases case one and case two in case one we have the launch clock which is arriving 10 percent late and the capture edge which is arriving 10 percent early so in this case the t clock plus t skew which we have on the right hand side of the equation is getting decreased if the condition is like a minus t jitter 1 plus minus t jitter 2 whereas in case 2 this right hand side part of the uh, equation increases because the launch clock is arriving a bit early minus 10 percent and the capture clock is capture uh, edge is arriving a bit late that is plus 10 percent so it is allowing more margin for the right hand side part of the equation so this is not the worst case and this is the worst case because the margin is decreasing it is having negative effect on this part of the equation so the final equation equation is like this t clock to q plus t maximum combinational delay plus t setup less than or equal to t clock plus t skew so this part of the equation we already know from the previous examples and now we are adding the effect of jitter that is nothing but minus tj1 minus tj2 in this case, uh, the capture capture clock edge and launch clock edge is varying uh, same amount of like having same amount of variation. It is plus or minus 10 percent. So this is equal Tj1 and Tj2 is equal. That is nothing but minus 2 Tj. So using this equation, we need to calculate the minimum clock period of the circuit in the pre in the example so in the given circuit we have three paths path one where flip-flop one is launch and flip-flop two is capture flop and path two where the flip-flop two is launch and flip-flop three is capture and there is one more path which is going like this where flip-flop two is launch and flip law one is capture here and this is the combinational logic in between 
So for each case, let's ca let's calculate the minimum clock period, and then we can come to a conclusion on uh, what is the worst case. So here, let's calculate for the path one. So t clock to q is given as five picosecond plus the t max, which is given as fifty picosecond plus t setup. Which is given as five picosecond less than or equal to t clock, which is needed to be calculated. And what about this q here? So this is launch path, and this is capture path. This q is nothing but t capture minus t launch. Since all the inverters have the same delay, so the launch clock is coming like this. So there are one, two, three inverters in the launch path. So launch path has two t inverter, three t inverter delays, whereas the capture clock path is coming like this, and it has only one inverter in between. So, so what is the skew here? Minus two t inverter, which is negative skew. So here we add the effect of negative skew. Minus two t inverter, and we have the jitter, which is nothing but plus or minus ten percent. So we have two into Delay of the inverter is five picosecond into ten percent of this. So we have sixty picosecond less than or equal to t clock minus two into inverter delay is five picosecond minus two into five picosecond into zero point one. What is the zero point one? Ten percent is nothing but ten by hundred, which is equal to zero point one. Yeah. So, what is t clock here? T clock is greater than or equal to sixty picosecond plus ten picosecond plus two into zero point five. That is one picosecond. So t clock is greater than or equal to seventy one picosecond. So this is the condition for path one. Now let's calculate for path two. So similar to previous case, we have t clock to T clock to Q as five picosecond plus the maximum delay is T max one plus T max two. That is nothing but twenty five picosecond plus thirty picosecond plus T setup is nothing but five picosecond less than or equal to T clock, which is needed to be calculated. And what is the skew here? Skew equal to this is launch and this is capture. So we have one inverter in launch and one inverter in capture. So we have t inverter minus t inverter, which is nothing but zero. We have zero clock skew. And what about the effect of clock jitter minus two into Five picosecond inverter delay into ten percent. That is zero point one. So t clock is greater than or equal to fifty-five picosecond plus zero clock skew. Not plus zero. It has negative effect, so minus zero. And then 
plus 2 into 0 0.5 it is 1 picosecond so t clock should be greater than or greater than or equal to 56 picosecond here for path 2 so let's calculate for path 3 so path 3 is a bit tricky here this becomes launch and this becomes capture and this is the logic in between so t clock to q is uh, given as 5 picosecond plus what is the maximum delays 25 plus 10 and the setup time is given as 5 picosecond which is less than or equal to t clock plus let's calculate the skew again here so how many inverters are there in the launch path this is the launch path and we have only one inverter and the capture clock path has one two three three inverter three t inverter minus 1 t inverter which is equal to 2 t inverter so the skew is nothing but 2 into 5 picosecond and the effect of jitter is 2 into 5 picosecond into 0 0.1 so finally 25 plus 10 35 less than 45 picosecond less than or equal to t clock less than picosecond minus 1 picosecond so t clock is greater than or equal to 45 minus 9 picosecond that is equal to 36 picosecond so this is for path 3 So what is the worst case here? So we have path 1 T clock should be greater than or equal to 71 picosecond Path 2 T clock should be greater than or equal to 56 picosecond And path 3, T clock should be greater than or equal to 36 picosecond. So what is the worst case here? Worst case is the path 1 which is having, which, which has the requirement of more clock period. So the minimum Clock period is nothing but 71 picosecond. So now uh, let's understand uh, what is the worst case for this effect of clock jitter. So if you observe the path 1 has negative skew plus jitter. So the negative skew plus jitter is adding more requirement of T clock because it is uh, subtracting both uh, both values are getting subtracted on t clock and it goes towards left hand side which increases the requirement of t clock whereas the no, no skew plus jitter is giving the uh, medium case it is not a uh, two worst or two best case so it is a medium case whereas the positive skew plus jitter is reducing the requirement of t clock so this is the best case so we can conclude that for the effect of clock jitter if we add a negative skew it becomes the worst case 
whereas the jitter plus positive skew becomes the best case. So this is the conclusion from this example. So in the next example, we can discuss on uh, the effect of jitter plus Q on the whole timing check and how do we resolve the uh, whole violation. Thanks for watching. Happy learning.